If you're a business owner moving to the area, or maybe you've just started a business, getting involved in a chamber of commerce is a great first step. In this episode, I'm talking to Scott Parker, who is the executive director of Shehalem Valley Chamber of Commerce. And that includes Newburgh and the surrounding areas. So we're going to be talking about what a chamber of commerce is, Scott's role as executive director, how a chamber of commerce benefits its members in community, as well as what it takes to build a strong business community. Also, given that Scott and I both can't help ourselves from telling dad jokes, you're going to hear a lot of alliteration. So get ready to roll your eyes. But also be ready to have fun and learn more about our Chamber of Commerce. Hi, I'm Daniel Roberts, host of the Giving Town podcast, where we share stories of hope and generosity in Newburgh and the surrounding areas. I'm also a local realtor in Newburgh, a Rotarian, an ambassador for our Chamber of Commerce, which you'll be hearing about, and a member of several local community organizations. So if you're a community leader, a nonprofit volunteer or employee, a service club member, or just someone who cares about this community, then this podcast is for you. We live in an amazing community full of incredible people who are working to make Newburgh an even better place to live. And this podcast is all about sharing those stories and helping the people in our town to be inspired, get involved, and have hope for our future. I also have the Living in Newburgh YouTube channel, which is all about what it's like living in Newburgh. So if you like these podcast episodes, then you'll probably enjoy that YouTube channel as well. This podcast is also brought to you by my real estate team, the Joyful Roberts Group. And it's also a part of our mission to serve this community, not just by providing amazing service to our clients, but also to help Newburgh be an even better place to live. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoy this episode as I talk with Scott Parker about Shehalem Valley Chamber of Commerce. All right, Scott, well, thanks for joining me today. It's been two years since our last interview, and that's actually back when this podcast was called the LP's Project. So obviously now we're the Giving Town, and you've now been with the Chamber for two years instead of just having joined. Yeah, it's been amazing. Uh, it's fast. It's, it's gone by in the blink of an eye, it seems like. I can't believe I'm in my third year already, which is crazy. Well, it's been a lot of fun. I think you've, you've brought a new flavor to the chamber, a lot of levity and, and humor, and we'll, we'll, we'll get into a lot of a lot of those things. But it's glad, it's, uh, I'm glad, and it's good to have you back. Thank you. And one of the things I want to do, this is actually the very first episode where uh, I'm actually able to share in the episode that we have a sponsor. So basically, because my day job is is real estate and all the time we're budget to promote these videos to the community. And so I ap- approached a few different organizations and they said, sure, we'd love to sponsor it. And the sponsorship dollars will essentially go towards sending this episode. Um, it'll basically that will go towards an ad that more people will listen to uh, this episode. So for this episode, the sponsor is actually First Federal, who happens to be one of the stakeholder members for the Shilhaim Valley Chamber of Commerce. So thank you, First Federal, for that. Obviously, if you know First Federal, you know they do a lot in the community, and, and Scott, they're great. They are, they're, they're great. They, they are one of the biggest supporters of all things Newburgh and Shilhaim Valley. So thank you, First Federal. Yeah, and if you're if you're if you're looking for a new bank or you're just wanting a place to to do your banking, there's actually a lot of really good programs they have. Like if you donate your time, so if you volunteer at a nonprofit, for example, they'll actually take some of your volunteer hours and I think pay up to like two dollars an hour yeah. if you're a if you're a member with them. So they just do a lot of great things. So thank you, First Federal, for helping more of our community hear this episode. Like I mentioned, I, all of the money that they contribute goes directly towards getting the word out to the community um, via, you know, Facebook or YouTube or Google ads, something like that. Not exactly sure how all the ad space is going to be, but just want to say thanks First Federal. I look forward to getting this message out. All right. So for people who aren't familiar with Chamber of Commerce, Scott, can you share, like, what does a chamber do? What is a chamber all about? Well, there is, uh, I mean, the chamber, if you were to ask, you know, 10 members what a chamber is, you're going to probably get 10 different answers. But um, last spring, or actually two springs ago, I attended the uh, Oregon State Chamber of Commerce convention. And uh, oh, gosh, I learned a lot. <laughs> anyway, the they use the three C's for what a chamber is. It's they're a, a, chambers are a catalyst, a convener, and a champion. Okay. I know what two of those are. And so the, that's sort of the tagline. If you go on a lot of Chamber of Commerce websites, you're going to see that 
Um, they're a, we're a catalyst for business growth. Okay. We're a convener of leaders and influential people. And we're a champion for a stronger community. But I like to add a fourth C, and that is that we're a connector. Hmm. And um, I know I've talked to you about the book, The Tipping Point by Malcolm yeah. Gladwell. Um, you know, for anything to become a big thing, you need people that are connectors. And so I like to say, you know, we don't know, um, we may not have the answer to your question, but we know somebody who does. So we can't be everything, but we, we have such a diverse uh, membership base that, that if you call us or stop in and you have a question, we can Okay, so um, what does it mean to be convener? We convene groups. Like we have a government affairs committee. We have a very strong ambassador team, of which you're a member. Full disclosure, people. Um, you know, I actually wrote a note. Don't forget to say <laughs> you're an ambassador. <laughs> I, um, I always forget to say that, so thanks. Yeah. We, we're, we're an organization that gets people together, uh, whether it's networking events like Friday morning greeters or chamber after hours or our leadership programs you know we're we're a convener of, of of people okay yeah so what does that mean to you by all those four like the three things and then the fourth that you added what does it mean to me is that uh, the chamber is a very wide-reaching organization we're a lot of things to a lot of different people okay you know? so I mean, we have members that just join for the networking opportunities we have members that join so they can have a say they can serve on our board of directors or one of our committees because to serve on one of our committees you have to be a member of the chamber and so we've got a very strong government affairs committee that um really looks at a lot of issues uh, especially candidates we've um you know the last two elections have had held candidate forums in collaboration, another C word. I'm big on C words. Co collaboration is a big one. Um, we team up with George Fox University's Civility Project and the City Club. And more C's there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, and we, uh, the most recent was the uh, school board candidate forum where, you know, we're just providing information to the public. So we had a moderator was Wade Witherspoon, one of our ex officio board members through George Fox University. He facilitated we had community members, including um, local Newburgh school students, uh, ask questions of the school board, and it was standing room only at George Fox University. And people on their way out were so appreciative that we put this event on, and it wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be possible without our strong government affairs committee. So that's you know one of the things we do really well, I think. Yeah. Well, in, in last time we talked, you said you were mostly like, hey, I'm just learning. I'm trying to figure out how do I be a good, and you did, you asked a lot of questions. You're like, I want to be a good uh, executive director of, of the chamber, but first I have to learn what's already going on and start just coming in and trying to do a bunch of new things. So now after two years, what would you say some of the main things you've learned and that you've incorporated into chamber? Uh, good question. I, th I think... One of the things that I've learned, and again, going back to the conference in Hood River that I went to with all the chamber executives, there was a, a phrase that sort of jumped out at me. I wrote it down. I've used it a multitude of times since then, and it's culture eats strategy for breakfast. Culture, another another C. Another C, right? This is, whoa, <laughs> this is cra crazy. Oh, boy, another C. Um, sponsored by the letter C. This is like Sesame <laughs> Street. This is great. Um, I believed in, in creating just a really strong, welcoming, fun culture at the chamber. And, you know, I mean, I think we kind of met on almost day one, you know, I started with just bad dad jokes and, and it got to be a thing where people would boo me, but then they're like, are you going to do jokes? You know, like, so this love hate relationship with my terrible humor, um, I saw that people liked it, that they saw the chamber was, I can't speak to what went on before me because I wasn't here. And I, I don't want to say that I don't care what went on before me, but I can't do anything about it other than just be me. And I think that's one of the things that the hiring committee liked was that I was going to come in and listen and lead the parade by being in the parade. And um, 
so I took the humor a little bit further and I sort of my big, you know, my big thing that I started was a, another collaborative effort with the, the Shehalem Cultural Center, <laughs> the Shehalem Park and Rec District, and the Shehalem Chamber of Commerce. And we started a fun variety show called Shehalem Valley Vaudeville. It started two Junes ago where it was just a fun, uh, I, our tagline is a family-friendly, non-political evening of humor. And so I found, I, I, my, my concept was to get the community to come together is, and, and sit and laugh and have a good time. And when you're sitting with somebody at a show where they're singing and juggling and magic and improv, you you have more in common than you have that's that, that divides you and and it worked and we got uh, great sponsorships through First Federal and Hagen Hamilton, the Ford Family Fo- and I'm switching to F's the Ford Family Foundation and First Federal, <laughs> uh, but also by the the Yamhill County Cultural Coalition. It's an awesome alliteration. <laughs> I had an English teacher that told me to always avoid alliteration. A horrible joke. Sorry, people. Did she actually? Because I no, like, it's just all A's. So always avoid alliteration. It's alliteration. So, so yeah. I totally, I totally would do that if I was an English teacher. <laughs> avoid cliches like the plague. You know, I mean, I've got a bunch. So, um, come to greeters, folks, and you'll hear these live and in person. Well, you know, that's <laughs> funny. I, you know, I'm probably not a great sample size of one because my real estate team is called the Joyful Roberts Group. So, you know, we like to have fun and and laugh. So maybe I. I go a little too far on. Well, <laughs> no, I mean, if it's any experience that the times we sit next to each other at Rotary, I kind of find that we're like nonstop heckling, you know, people. And it's very fun to to be sitting next to you at Rotary. We don't heckle. Not not heckle. Um, not heckle. What's the right word? Um, make sarcastic comments about things. Don't you think? I think we do that in a kind way. I mean, well, not. I mean, not. I'm not meanly. I mean, they're funny to us. We crack each other up. We're like Waldorf and Stadler, the Muppet hecklers that I love in the balcony. <laughs> My wife hates when I reference them, but yeah, yeah, I am Waldorf and Stadler. I didn't even know that was their names. That's great. Yeah, after the hotels. Yeah. Well, and I like how you um, how you brought in your past experience of uh, oh gosh, I'm for, forgetting the name. Uh, the Chief Theater, it's Chief Theater, Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Yeah, the, um, a lot of parallels to running a nonprofit performing arts theater and running a chamber. I mean, you want people to enjoy whether they're sitting down and seeing a show or whether they're a member of your organization, you want them to, you want them to have a good time. You want them to see value in what they're doing and what they're getting out of it. And, you know, I do like to, I mean, I, I've told Angie the point that I'm going to single her out often. Um, you know, she was a member for, of the chamber for many years, then she stopped being a member. And I was able to, one of the things that I was, I'm slowly still doing is reaching out to people that were members in the past that maybe, Dropped for certain reasons, COVID being one of them, but uh, was able to get back in touch with her and just said, Angie, just come, you know, come to a greeters. And, and she did, and she had a great time and she re uh, upped her membership. And then I want to say within a month, she said, Scott, I want to be on the ambassador team because the chamber is fun. And I was like, can I, can I use you as a testimonial, please? And it's just the culture I've tried to create is just a warm, welcoming, fun place to be. And and people ask me, you know, what's the chamber about? Just come to a greeters. Come to a greeters and see what we're all about. You, you've been, you're at most of them. We, we get between 30 and 50 people every Friday. Um, people get to talk and network and hear about the host business. And people that are on the fence of whether or not they should join usually end up joining. And we just sent our e-blast today. And I think we welcome... Six new members in the month of September. And that's sort of the average. We're getting, you know, between five and 10 members uh, every month. And so we're growing and people are just enjoying what we're doing. You know, it's a great, obviously for me, I've, I've been one of the ambassadors. So of course, I have to promote it. But even before I was, I just think there's a lot of value in being around people, creating relationships. And you never know when one connection is going to make a difference in in your business, in your career. And it just pays to to get to know people is, is really what I think. Yeah. And some people are are members of the chamber. They don't come to the networking events, just they either want to support it or, um, you know, they have their other reasons. 
So if someone say, you know, someone's like, hey, I want to be a part of the chamber. Fridays just don't work for me. What other things does the chamber offer to, to people besides the the greeters event? We, uh, you know, we do uh, evening networking events once a month called Chamber After Hours, and we do get a sort of a different group at those. Um, but I would say one thing I'm really proud of is leadership, Shehalem Valley. Mm. And last year was sort of the first year of, you know, coming out of COVID, we had a really strong cohort of 18. And this year we have 23. And it is a diverse group. It's members of this, you know, city of Newburgh. We've got people from ADAC. We've got in small business owners. And so I think one of the perks, you get a nice discount for being a member. And if you're one of the higher up members, you get a you either 50% off or a free enrollment. It's 695 bucks to be in leadership Chehale Valley. But it is a valuable program that we offer. It, you know, from September through June, you get once a month, very intense. No, I shouldn't say intense. It's fun. It's not like intense. Um, it's thorough. We'll use the word thorough. Uh, leadership training in the morning and then the afternoons you go and you learn about the community and the themes range from, you know, tourism to education, health and human services. So you hit all different aspects of the community and we have people join that have been in Newburgh for a few months, as well as people that have been in Newburgh their whole lives. And the people that have been here their whole lives walk away with things that they never knew about their community. So I think the chamber is, that's one of the things I'm most proud of that the chamber does is our leadership mm. class. So yeah, people always speak very highly of that. I know my mom went through as also one of the ambassadors. Yeah. Uh, vice, I think vice president is a role of our Rotary Club. Yeah. And she's just spoke very highly of it and and really enjoyed it. Yeah, so there's that. And then it used to be, you know, at least my understanding is that a chamber used to be, I mean, back in the yellow pages days, like someone would come to a town and they'd be wondering like, hey, what's, you know, what are the businesses that I should connect with? And they'd call the chamber and the chamber would be able to give them a reference. Is that still a part of it at all? Or how's that kind of every day? Over? We get people coming in, for maps of Newburgh, we get people coming in um, for Yellow Pages still. We just had a phone call today asking about a local business. When are they opening? It's a, a new credit union that's in town. And they said, you know, when are they opening? And so people still call the chamber to find out what's going on. We get calls about the Old Fashioned Festival. We get calls about the Christmas tree lighting, even though it's a program of, of the Downtown Coalition. Um we're, we're that organization that people look to when they have a question about something. And it's, I love it. I just think it's absolutely amazing that, that we're able to provide that service for the community, whether you're a member or not. I mean, that's the thing I want to make sure is clear is that, you know, we don't hang up on you. If you're, oh, you're not a member. I'm not going to, and we don't just promote members, you know, we're, we're inclusive, you know? Mm -hmm. So if someone comes in, to the visitor center and has a question about a certain winery. And we're not going to say, Oh, don't go there. They're not a chamber member. We, we are, we're open um, to everybody and same with greeters. It's not a networking event. That's only open to chamber members. It's open to everybody. Is there a benefit for member? Like if you're a member, are you more likely to be referenced out? If someone has a need, like say painter construction or something. Uh, I mean, Personally, I, I think there's a little parallel between a Rotary Club and the Chamber. I mean, Rotarians tend to trust other Rotarians, you know, and and I feel like Chamber members trust other Chamber members, you know. I would say the majority of people that do attend our greeters and other events like that are Chamber members. So um, it just sort of goes hand in hand with membership that, you know, if you're looking for a title company, you may go with the one that is coming to greeters all the time and you've got a relationship with. So to me, it's about relationship building and, and the chamber is good at putting those people together. Again, I like to, uh, you know, quote Ellen Shea. I mean, she, she started coming to greeters and she loves to talk about how through coming to greeters, she found her realtor. Great people. I heard you know, uh, she found her realtor, her mortgage company and her title company, all from coming to chamber networking events. And then she joined our ambassador team. So I, you know, I don't, I guess I could brag a little bit, <laughs> you know, we're, we're, our networking events uh, pay off. 
Yeah. It, it, you just, you get what you put into it. You know, a lot of people, when they join, they, you know, they say, what, what do I get out of my membership? And so we say, well, the first thing is, you know, Meryl, I got to give a shout out to Meryl. Meryl's our director of operations and she's amazing. And so she gets in touch with people right away after they join and says, come on in to the visitor center and let's have a cup of coffee and talk about the relationship we have. And communication is the key to any relationship. So if you have an event coming up, email us and we'll put it out in our e-blast. If you have posters you'd like us to hang up, we'll hang up posters. If you have special announcements, come to Greeters and we'll, you know, there's a specific time in Greeters when you can share your events. So we can't know that you have events if you don't tell us. So like I say, it's it's, it's all about communicating. Another C word. Catalyst, convener, champion, connector, culture, collaboration, communication. At the Shalem. At the Shalem. Chamber of Commerce in partnership with cool. Two minutes. Today's episode is brought to you by the letter C. That was my Cookie Monster impression. It's like Cookie, cookie Monster. Oh, Daniel. Mixed with Yoda. That's, kind of <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> cookie Yoda. He's a cookie Jedi. Anyway, yeah. I never knew. Long lost cousins that look nothing alike. Okay. So, so, <laughs> so are, with the chamber, are there any exciting announcements or anything coming up that you'd like to share? Yeah, there absolutely is. So um, last month, myself and five of our chamber ambassadors went to a conference in Klamath Falls. That's with the K. Um, and it was just, just amazing to be around like-minded people. So it was, you know, about... 40 chamber ambassadors from, I think, 15 different chambers from across the state. Anyway, had a great time. And we sat, you know, we kind of all put our heads together and we said, we, we should host this. So in 2025, Newberg uh, will be hosting the Oregon Ambassador Conference. And we are just really excited to show our community off to the connectors of the chamber world. So... Um, that's kind of big news. And, um, you know, other thing I do like to talk about is our, we just have good relationships. I, I just think everyone can play nice together. We've, we've got a destination marketing organization called Taste Newberg. We've got an amazing downtown coalition and we've got amazing leadership at the city and we meet regularly. We have a, it's called our stable table. And so Aubrey Nichols, who's the director of the Downtown Coalition, Lee Jensen, who is the director of Tate Newberg, we get together and we meet and we talk about what's going on and how can we help each other. You know, right now we're talking about a collaborative grant proposal to bolster First Friday Art Walk. We have a, a new team member named Max, who's part of, uh, it's called the Rare, which is basically a subset of AmeriCorps, which is like the Peace Corps, but in America. And uh, so we have him working on four different projects for our organizations. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he and I are personally working on is um, basically we're looking at a date in March for a, a nonprofit round table slash panel discussion to get all of the nonprofit executives in the same room together to um, talk and share best practices and, and you know, communicate. Um, Having been a nonprofit executive, I know how busy people get. And so if you can set aside the time to be in the same room with your peers, it's amazing what comes out of that. So um, I've got high hopes for that. And I'm actually really excited about that too, because I was something I was thinking independently and I said, oh my gosh, I don't have the bandwidth to do this, um, you know, w with the podcast and having multiple relationships. And I'd actually be happy to, to help at least get the word out somehow, um, because I know there's a lot of nonprofit people who listen to this. So sometime in March, we've got a little bit of time. We do. Uh, but I think that's an amazing thing that you're doing. Another thing that you guys helped put on is the child care forum, right? And that was back in when? Uh, that was last February. And actually, I just set a date for the end of April for our second child care and family resource fair. Because I, I learned today, actually, that this area is considered a child care desert. Yes. Which sucks. <laughs> it, 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 it does suck. Um, so we, this was Meryl's brainchild and it was so well done for the first one. 
the inaugural. It was free to the public to show up, and it was free for any organization that wanted to be part of it. We had some really good sponsors that made that happen, and so we're going to do it again. We had a we walked around to every every booth slash table that was there, and we said, "What would you want to see? Do you want to see another one?" And everyone said yes. And we said, "What would you want to see added to it?" And they were like, eh, "Maybe some kids entertainment." So we're going to reach out to you know get somebody there for the kids and. You know, just little things like having coffee and snacks and things like that. But people wanted it to happen. And people, and the, the thing, again, Daniel, this is funny. When you ask, you know, I'd go from booth to booth and say, what do you what do you like about this? And one of the things that people said was, I'm never in the same room with all the childcare people. And so that's what got my brain spinning about wanting to do this, this uh, big, you know, event for the nonprofits. Because we did one in Steamboat Springs, and it was really successful. It spun off from that all of the nonprofit performing arts groups. We got together, and we had our monthly performing arts coalition. And we said, let's, you know, let's start with not scheduling our fundraisers on the same weekend. I mean, we're coming up on big fundraiser season right now. We've got this Friday is the Rotary 51st Annual Auction, and the night after that is Sir Optimists, and... I think the weekend after that is um, the cultural center and a family place, right? Oh, I think I missed family place on my event video. They're all within a couple of weeks of each other, though. And and there's, you know, donors and ticket buyers get some fatigue with that. So yeah, I think if there's any way to, you know, open the lines of communication and figure out, can we spread these out a little more? Or... Anyway, just get the lines of communication strengthened i guess maybe well that's exactly what part of what i was thinking is this when you have your fundraiser on the same weekend it really makes it difficult especially for the same organizations to support each other which many want to yeah but if you're volunteering in one or helping put it on you can't really make the time to go to the other one and i think those types of things are really valuable i think it's valuable for organizations that are very similar and trying to accomplish the same things finding ways to partner together rather yeah. than compete. And then the other side of that, that would be interesting is to get a lot of the community champions together. So organizations like First Federal, and there's many others, ADEC is another one that yeah. they do a lot to support the community. They really are focused on giving back and getting them together and saying, hey, how can we work together as a community? And and with a stable table too. And, and didn't you just recently meet, I don't know if that's like something you can share. There's a few different people that met I think in collaboration with George Fox about. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, no, we've got some great. Uh, we've got a great relationship with George Fox going right now, and they reached out because they they just got some amazing things that they're doing, and wanted to get more plugged into the community, and so they said the three George Fox. Uh, uh, employees are going through Leadership Shehalem Valley, which is amazing. And they're hosting the lunches for for Leadership Shehalem Valley. But yeah, we 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 uh, started a roundtable with them. I shouldn't say we started, they started. They invited us all to the table. And I mean, they've got some amazing things. There's going to be a, you know, a mass uh, MBA program going through ADAC. And then we're, we're, Talking about having won uh, a Shehalem Valley Masters in Business Administration cohort that um, is locally themed, which I think is an amazing idea. I mean, George Fox University is one of the pillars of this community, and for them to be so engaged with their local business community, and they want opportunities for their business students to be plugged into the community. They want them to graduate and stay here if they can. And I have to give a shout out to Debbie Thomas, the yes. scene of business there is the she's been a major spearheader of of these efforts. So um yeah, so thank you, Debbie. Oh, a huge shout out to Debbie. She co- and she comes to greeters now. I mean, they're 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 very plugged into the community. It was one of my goals was to um just get more engaged with George Fox University. It took, you know, Debbie, it took finding Debbie to to make this happen. So Debbie, if you're listening, thank you. Um <laughs> But deserved, you know, kudos to her, and it's just it just makes me giddy to you know have this relationship with George Fox now because it's like I said, it's just a pillar of the community. Yeah. So on on that note, 
kind of moving a different direction though. What do you think makes a strong business community? Um, what makes a, a diversity? And that's a all encompassing word. I mean, I feel like we're, we're all in this together. We've got strong manufacturing. We've got strong agriculture, strong tourism. You know, if, if we can all agree that we can work together for the betterment of our families, our visitors, um, if we can all play nicely together, I think that's the sign of a strong business community. And I think if you just look at the chamber and you go, oh, wow, they, they meet regularly with the Destination Marketing Organization. They meet with the Downtown Coalition. They meet with the city. Merrill attends all the city council meetings. And, you know, we've got a board president and a president-elect who were involved with the committee that helped um, revamp the system development charges. So we've got a, I think we've got a really good thing going right now. We, we all, we've got good relationship with the mayor, the city manager, city council. I think, I'm not sure if I answered your question or if I'm just rambling. Um, good relationships, communication, collaboration, playing nice. Yeah, I think if someone came to the community and was said, you know, I'm thinking of, of moving my business here or uh, I'm looking at one of your, you know, downtown storefronts that, that currently is vacant and they saw what a strong collaborative effort there are with all the organizations. I don't know. I think it's a strong indicator of a good business community. Yeah. What are some things you'd like to see for the future of the business community? Or like if you could wave a magic wand and say, hey, I'd love, love to see this happen. Oh boy. Okay. I've waved my magic wand and it's two years down the road. And one of the things I want to see is that cultural center's theater on the second floor, Don. The arts are a proven economic stimulus for an area. And I think you're going to be amazed at how many people will come to events at that amazing theater that come from Denver. Denver, I have Steamboat Springs in my brain right now. They come from Portland, <laughs> Portland and Salem and probably spend the night. Hmm. And, um, you know, or they come to town for a wine tasting and stay for a show. I think you're going to see that happen. I want to see our downtown businesses thriving. I want to see uh, all the the storefronts fall. I want people walking up and down participating in, in First Friday Art Walk, they pop into a, a gallery or a business and have a glass of wine and they see a, a jazz musician playing. And I just I just want our downtown vibrant. And and that's not taking anything away from any of the other businesses, but I just feel that if you have a vibrant downtown, it lends itself to all the other businesses. It, it, a family wants to maybe move here then and buy a house and and instead of living somewhere else and working at ADAC, maybe they live in Newburgh and work at ADAC. And um, that's actually something that I'm really personally trying to work on somewhat with this podcast, somewhat with my my YouTube channel is I want people to, that work in Newburgh, Newburgh to live in Newburgh. I mean, obviously there's not houses for everyone. Right. But if they have the choice, live here and, and do yeah. your business here right. instead of just work here. We, we had... Um, when we were interviewing candidates for this rare program, it was Aubrey, uh, Lee Jensen, and I doing Zoom meetings with, I think we ended up interviewing about six different candidates. And one of the candidates who's very familiar with Newburgh, one of our questions was, what, you know, what do you know about our community? And she used the term, an embarrassment of riches, which she said, you know, you have, you have everything. You've got outdoor recreation. You have the river right there. So if you're into paddle boarding or kayaking, if you like wine tasting, if you like ag, if you like industrial, I mean, the fact that two biggest dental manufacturers in the world are in Newburgh, Oregon, you know, you've got George Fox University, you've got an amazing golf course, you, you've you got this, I brag on this place so much to my friends. And now that Rogers Landing is is cleaning up. Right, absolutely, absolutely. It This place has something for everybody. And so that stuck with me, that that embarrassment of riches was just like spot on. So this this area has something for everybody. It's interesting. I've never really thought about it that way. I but it makes sense now that you mentioned that. I, I just never considered that. Hmm. So and it's one of the other things that I personally am hopeful, even though I know I asked you the question, I'm gonna share my own 
thoughts is, and everyone seems to be kind of very, there's this excited or nervous, not nervous, but like this anticipatory tension about the old mill site. Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, I think it's what, 120, 140 acres of industrial, light industrial land. That's a fair amount. Yes. That I think they're actively working on marketing that now, which means we, in several years, we could have new businesses yes. down there. That's exciting. So we don't really know what's going yeah, on. Yeah. I think there's a lot of, um, we can't say going on right mm -hmm. now. There's a lot of confidentiality type things with places that are interested. So yeah. I think it's just going to be wait and see. And, and I think it's going to be a great thing for the community once that's finally developed. Yeah. I'm personally really excited for the, how that all incorporates with the riverfront master plan, mm -hmm. which if you're not familiar, there's a, gosh, was that 2019, 2020, there's a whole proposal to, I don't know, anything with government does take a long time. That is one of the major frustrations. Um, but that'll be a great thing for our business community as well. And one of the things that you mentioned earlier is what culture eats strategy for breakfast. Mm -hmm. Is that what the phrase was? Is when you have a culture in place and a new business comes, they're going to look at, well, how do I fit in to this community? And that's the culture. They sense the culture. And so they're much more likely to, to fit into that and maintain some of those same um, philosophies. So I think creating a good culture also attracts people who want to be a part of a culture like that. Yeah, you're getting people that are going to be involved. And that's what you want, really, I mm -hmm. think, is people that say, I want to do this thing. How can I, how can I help make that happen? Um, yeah, so I, I think, I don't know, I think there's exciting times for our area. I really do. So what is one message you'd like to send to the people of Newburgh as the Shahilam Valley Chamber of Commerce Executive Director. Get involved. I think get involved. There's a lot of good service clubs. There's there's a lot you can do, even if it's just serving on a committee or a volunteering for an event like Tunes on Tuesday. One of the things I'm real proud of that we did, we took on Tunes on Tuesday. Um, serve on a committee. Serve on a city committee. You know, if you have a problem with something that's going on, don't complain about it without offered a solution. And sometimes the solution's easier than you think. So be involved. I guess that would be my advice. Be involved. If you, um, if you want to find out what the chamber's all about, come to our, our Friday morning greeters. This, this coming up Friday will be a coffee, a caravan coffee. And uh, it goes from eight o'clock to nine o'clock. Find out what we're all about and just be involved. That's, I guess my, well, in this, this episode will be published in two weeks on the 24th some people hear this unfortunately so whatever the one on that friday is that will be 27 20 yeah i think the 27th would be that friday i think anyway come come to agree well that is this part <laughs> yeah <laughs> no i won't but dang it <laughs> i don't have time to edit oh uh, uh, yeah but come I think that's a great point. You can go to the Chamber of Commerce website or Facebook yeah, page. Valley.org. And I'll have a link in there. Yeah. Um, I'm a dinosaur. I still use Facebook. And you guys have your events that you, you put on there. Uh-huh. So I don't even use Facebook. So, And you can sign up for the newsletter, which always has great information announcements. Great yes. way to be involved. All right. Last question for you. I did not prep you for this one. But if you've listened to an episode, you might know what it is. What gives you hope for the future of Newburgh? What gives me hope for the future, Newberg, is is I'm just going to go back to our collaboration that that organizations and our local government are all working together. Um, you know, the city manager, the mayor, the city council, chamber, the DMO, and our downtown coalition all have good working relationships with each other, and so that gives me hope. I mean, you don't hear that in a lot of communities. You hear friction. Oh, they did this or they did that, and I just I just feel like we're we're all in this together and we realize that. And so what gives me hope is just the, the strong leadership that we have in a lot of our organizations. So I would wholeheartedly agree. It's great to have strong leaders at the top and leaders with integrity, which has not always been the case in Newburgh. Um, not necessarily, I wouldn't say in chamber, but in the city itself, I mean, there's a long history of, of problems. Um, so it's great to have Will worthy as our manager and you know we've got a mayor who's strong in business and yeah. a, lot of, a lot of great people well thank you scott for taking the time to share about 
chamber and your involvement. I'm excited to get this message out to the community. Appreciate all that you do. Thank you. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for tuning in to the Giving Town podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with a friend who you think might benefit from hearing it. While more and more people are continuing to hear about this podcast, I still need your help to spread the message about all the people and organizations that make Newberg so great. Well, thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next episode.